everybody. What's happening? This is like the post-game show. Tom Lydon here at the Bean Family Farm with Christopher Bean. And we haven't even really had a chance to talk much, Chris, since the party, which was on August 29th. So this is a, a good opportunity just to put a bow on the second annual Westwood Living Bean Farm Summer Bonanza. What was the feedback you got? And, and what was your experience that night? Because we're both so busy. The, the Bonanza was incredible. We had an awesome turnout. It was great to see a lot of new and familiar faces come through the farm. A lot of families came and enjoyed their time here. We had some great food from Pollard's Test Kitchen. Um, you know, we had a lot of local uh, veggies from the farm on the menu, which was awesome. People getting to, you know, see the Bean Farms products and try it on site. Uh, we had the animals here, which was great. All the kids loved that. I saw the John Deere tractor was a big hit. It's nuts when you go through the photo gallery. And it is, you, it is. You yeah, see what people really photos. enjoyed. Uh, I love the fact that it really is a family event, and we could not have been more blessed with better weather. That might have been the nicest night of the entire summer. It, it was literally a perfect summer evening. It, what a way to kick into Labor Day. It's like... It's a good and bad thing because you'd like to know how many people are coming because there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of right. people who need to know the numbers. But just like last year, we had that mad rush in the final few days. I mean, I'm talking we went to bed on Sunday night into Monday and the party was on Thursday. We had 200 people coming. Right. And on Thursday, 350 people drove their car in the driveway. So just remarkable that people come and have a good time. And I appreciate your hospitality and your whole family being on board and everybody who did come to the party, who's listening to this. Thank you. And you should know that we did raise 750 bucks for the Norfolk County Farm Bureau, which is cool. That's awesome. You know, you know, when you consider all the costs that were involved in us putting on the events that we had a little bit left over that we could give back to a good cause. That's cool. So let's start a little bit uh, with the fact that we're now in, as people are listening to this September, but as people read your business profile October, what's the next couple of months like for the Bean Family Farm? So right now we are um, getting ready for fall. We're starting to offer some different winter squashes. We're getting some local apples. We'll be getting apple cider soon. Hopefully some cider donuts starting in a week or two on the weekends. Nice. And then we have a big display of our own homegrown pumpkins. We've got large carving jack-o'-lanterns. We've got yellow pumpkins, white minis gourds warty ones you name it we'll have it all yeah i see the mums out there too right and we've got yep we just got a bunch of mums delivered in over the weekend we'll have uh five different colors for sale they're all nine inch pots locally grown from another farm in massachusetts is there a lot of that that goes on you're all shaking each other's hands and doing business with each other and you know you're buying mums from somebody who's local and they're buying vegetables from you is that is exactly. it a small world that way it really is there's, you know there's not a lot of us but we all get along and help each other out and you know we all grow what we grow and we you know buy and sell from each other quite often which is great so it's nice to know that I can go to a place where I know who they are, I know what they're growing, I know the product, and I feel comfortable buying stuff from their farms and selling it at mine and vice versa. You know, I'm supplying a lot of these other places with my, you know, my vegetables too. The tomatoes, by the way, unbelievable. I mean, I have enjoyed them with Danielle throughout the entire summer, <laughs> and I'm going to be so sad when it's out of season, but uh, we're fans of a lot of the stuff that comes out of this farm. And what people don't understand is the amount of work that – is behind harvesting these these vegetables yeah, that people, come from it the farm. Is, it is it just it's almost like tooting your own horn a little bit, but you deserve it in terms of the amount of work that goes into running this place. So I, I give you the stage to sort of let people understand what it really takes to run a working farm. You know, the season's super short when you think about it. We're only here and growing and harvesting for a couple months of the year, but it really is a 365-day commitment with the planning that goes into operating the farm and my farm management plan and what I'm growing, how I'm growing, troubleshooting. You know, every day I wake up with a plan, but there's always challenges that come up, and, you know, labor is a, a huge issue in today's world, especially on a, a farm where, uh, you know, it's, it's back-breaking work. You're out in the heat and the humidity and... You know, it's hard to attract a crowd to want to do that, but I'm fortunate that I do have a small crew of people that help me out and do a, a wonderful job. But uh, there's a lot that goes into it, and it's a labor of love. So you had a special corn this summer. What was that corn? So I brought back an old-school favorite that I don't think has been grown on this farm since my grandfather did back in probably the late 80s or early 90s called Silver Queen. So it's a smaller, um, thinner completely white ear of sweet corn but the kernels are super super tender and extra crisp and extra sweet so good and it was delicious and we got a lot of great reviews on it so it was awesome to bring that back it, it was really remarkable 
and I would. This is no offense intended, but you got to be a little bit of a farming nerd to be good at this, don't you? I mean, your education is in understanding this stuff. So obviously, you had the romantic involvement with your grandfather when you were a little kid, and he was running the farm. But at what point does it become your true passion, where you're like, I really like doing this, and I want to know as much as I can about it? Yeah, it's kind of funny. I, I've thought about that. I think it just kind of hit me um, as a kid being around the farm and my grandfather taking me to other farms and going to see animals at the Norfolk Aggie School and, you know, sitting in the tractor with him around here. I just fell in love with that lifestyle. And, you know, once he passed when I was in middle school, I started to say, you know what, I want to take interest and start doing this myself. And you know, I got my hands dirty, learned how to drive the tractor, use all of the implements for the tractor, and just kind of took off from there. I knew that's what I wanted to do, and I loved doing it. And a lot of your success, I'm sure, is based on word of mouth because you've got such loyal customers who come, and they're your base. But you got to rely on them to sort of spread the word and start telling the stories. It, of the, It's so the, true. Right? I've got a lot of excellent customers that are my biggest supporters, my biggest fans. And, you know, Facebook has been a massive tool, and Westwood Living has been a massive tool for my advertising and marketing. And... You know, if it wasn't for the word of mouth and my customers sharing Facebook posts and telling their friends about the stuff we have to offer here, the business wouldn't be where it is today. So how about the concept of the Christmas trees and all the holiday stuff that we're going to see basically take this place over on Black Friday? At what point did you say that's an area where we need to be and how big has that been to your bottom line business? So I actually started by selling Christmas trees down the street at two other local businesses, and I just loved it. You know, I love the holiday spirit. I love the season. And, um, you know, I, I worked for other places selling Christmas trees, and I was just like, I have to do this. Like, you got I, the space, right? We've got, <laughs> we've got the space. We've got a crowd coming to buy other stuff in the fall and the summer, so why not offer, you know, premium fresh cut Christmas trees? And, you know, I love doing it. So what have you learned about that process? Because I know it was a little bit different in 2023 than it was from 2022. So what lessons are you going to take from the first two years or the last two years that you're going to apply to this year? So every year I'm adapting and changing with honestly everything on the farm, but the Christmas trees is just absolutely volatile. Um, you know, year after year, I'm trying to pinpoint, you know, what I need for sizes and how many of each size and what to get for holiday decorations, how many wreaths, how many bows are me and Grammy going to crank out. I've kind of gotten to the point now that this will be my sixth year selling the trees and doing the holiday stuff. I, I know what I have coming in the door for numbers. It's just how fast... You know, am I going to grow from there? How many more trees am I going to get from the previous year? You know, hoping that the business is, you know, going to continue to expand and grow. But we'll see. 2024 should be interesting. Now, you just glanced over it. But how many wreaths Grammy and I can churn out? <laughs> I mean, people should appreciate that a little bit. That it's literally Grammy, Ellen Abeen. Uh, my, poor, my poor grandmother, she busts, she busts her butt over there. She makes all of those bows. They're absolutely spectacular super long tails and then she also puts custom decorations little cones and cherries and little holly leaves stuff like that to make some custom decorated wreaths and it really is a lot of work we start making those bows in october sometime end of october early november we'll sit down for a couple hours each night and try and make you know 15 20 25 bows and and it's a lot of work and a lot of twisting with your hands and pinching and pulling the wire so it's not easy I, I bet. So a couple of the things I'm interested in. One, and this is just me not understanding the way farming works. You had to explain it to me, but I think it's worth explaining to the people who drive by all the time. And they looked last year to their right as they drove down towards the Varian and they saw a whole bunch of corn, right? But this year, that's not the case. And you said, well, yeah, that's how farming works. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so what was there this year and why is it different than what was there last year? So it's super important for soil health to continuously rotate your crops on the farm. You don't want to grow the same crop or even the same crop family in the same field year after year because pathogens and soil-borne diseases that attack certain plants can overwinter and then you can deal with a lot, a lot of problems. So wherever I grow any squash type plants, so like pumpkin, summer squash, zucchini, butternut, you name it, um, anything that I would grow like that, the next year I wouldn't want to put any of those in that same field. I mean, you, you definitely could, but in order to have a healthier crop, it's definitely better to rotate. So where you'll see the corn on the farm one year, the next year you'll probably see pumpkins or tomatoes. Something yeah, that totally was the different. case here, right? You had the pumpkins that took exactly. over where the corn so was So 2022, last year. we had the pumpkin patch next to the farm stand. 2023, we had corn. And now 2024, we're back to having pumpkins right next to us. Got it. I've also seen a little bit of an explosion of animals, right? A little bit more cows, yep. uh, a few more pigs, 
and we got the alpacas. So what service do each of these animals offer? So the beef cows are great because they've been cleaning up some leftover veggies in the farm. So have the two pigs. So nothing really goes to waste here. We're not throwing anything away. If it's not good enough for human consumption, it's going into creating a meat product. So from the pigs, we're obviously selling fresh Berkshire pork. Um, from my cows, I'm selling direct to customer whole cows, fresh Angus beef. And then uh, starting in early October, I'm hoping to have my own beef to sell right out of the farm store here during our you know, fall pumpkin sales. That's awesome. So do you love it? I mean, this is your passion, right? Oh, I, I absolutely love this. I couldn't see myself doing anything else. Being <laughs> but, on the farm is, is where I'm happiest. But it is such, you used the word earlier, volatile, right? It is a volatile industry. So how do you stay on top well, of it? Well, to be honest with you, that's why I love it, Tom. I get up every day and every single day I do something different. I, I, you know, you'll have a plan in the back of your head of what you want to accomplish, what you want to get done. That's super important. But honestly, it's a farm. Something comes up in a split second and your whole day changes. Well, your crew deserves big kudos. Everybody was super helpful throughout the lead up to the party. You had some of your staff here helping out during the party, which was great. So much appreciated. And hopefully they got a chance to enjoy themselves. It's going to be super busy throughout the fall. And as you sell the trees, so we certainly will be back here stocking up ourselves. And I encourage all of you who are listening to stop by the Bean Family Farm. It's at 711 Clapwood Tree Street right here in Westwood. Been here since 1971. If you want to read more about the farm and its history, which is fascinating. I invite you to go to our website, westwood-living.com. That was the month that we featured the Bean family, both Chris and his grandmother, Elena, on the cover. And a little bit more detail that takes you back in time. But I appreciate your friendship and your partnership. And I, I can't tell you how much people get back to me and say thank you for creating an event like that. And the event wouldn't exist without a venue like this. So thanks very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. We've appreciated working with you in Westwood Living. It's been awesome. Awesome. That is Chris Bean, of course, the owner here of the Bean Family Farm. So stop on by and make sure you got everything you need for the end of the fall and, of course, the holiday season. How can you not buy a wreath now? Now that you know they physically labor over a dining room table <laughs> for six weeks at a time to make those bows and wreaths for you but that is the very latest from the westwood living podcast network if you can think of somebody else you'd like me to have a conversation with as always just reach out send me an email t at bestversionmedia.com i'll track that person down have a conversation with them and share it with you right here across the podcast network but for now with chris bean i'm tom Lydon saying so long and thanks for listening mm -hmm.